Good afternoon. I'm Tracy Kirkland and I'm doing an alternate presentation for those of you who are not able to join us for our parent night. I'm going to start with the presentation. The presentation that I have is going to include slides and pictures of students in events and activities in the school. Some of them are pre-COVID and some of them are um, from this year. So this is Curtis Secondary School, and we have many different events for students to participate in during the school year. The one that I have on the slide here was the Terry Fox Walk that we had back in September. Students participated in a socially distanced manner, and um, they participated by class. So we really tried to keep a lot of the activities that we traditionally have, even during times of COVID. So why students should come to Curtis Secondary School? We have many leadership and community involvement activities. You'll see in the upper left-hand corner, the students are all dressed in neon, and that was another Terry Fox walk that we had done in the past to support one of our teachers who had had cancer. Her name was Ms. Nelson, so it was a neon for Nelson theme. We also have automotive technology, manufacturing technology, construction technology, computer technology, and we're moving into the STEM area where we are going to have um, a lab dedicated to students working not only in programming, but also in robotics. We have many different sports teams that students can play in, fitness and weight training. We have green industries where students are working in apiculture with the bees, or they could be tapping for maple syrup, or they might be working in our greenhouse or planting as you can see here in the picture. We also have various arts programs. So everything from visual arts to drama and music and digital arts. And then finally, we have many different clubs that students can participate in. You'll see in this picture, this was just pre-COVID, the students were participating in Dungeons and Dragon. We actually had the Dungeons and Dragons Club running this past semester so that students could participate socially distanced with masks on in the cafeteria. This slide shows one of our students in our grade 10 culinary courses. It's food and nutrition and the students were participating in a chef challenge where they were making different desserts. So I'm going to go over our commitment to students, student expectations, the secondary school diploma requirements, so things that students need to have in order to graduate, the grade nine course requirements, types of courses that students can choose from, the specialized programs that we have at Curtis Secondary, and how students can get involved and enjoy the high school experience. This is our soccer team. So our commitment to students begins with a balanced timetable. Myself and Ms. Stone, the other guidance counselor in our school, we will look at all the grade nine timetables to try and ensure that students are not in four compulsory courses in one semester. We are hoping to be back in a semestered system beginning September next year. So what that means is students will have four courses in the first half of the year, and then four other courses in the second half of the year, the year for a total of eight courses will try and ensure that students do not have four compulsory subjects that are heavy in one semester together. We also have French immersion at our school and I'll address what's necessary for a student to complete for an immersion certificate on that slide when I get to it. We also have a specialist high skill major in arts and culture, construction and the environment. It is a specialized program for students who might be thinking that they'd like to go into one of those sectors and it gives them reach ahead activities and so forth that they can do while they're in the high school. We also have dual credit opportunities where students actually take a high school credit and a college credit at the same time. The teacher from the college will come in and teach in, in a team taught environment with our teacher here. 
and they will receive the two different credits. We also offer a specialized program in advanced placement starting in grade 10. We have special education and a resource room at the school. So if your student has an IEP, that IEP will follow them into high school and the students can access the resource room when they need specialized support. We also have a student success room for students, any student in the school to access if they need one on one support. Miss Lori Bapti is our student success teacher and she's always happy to serve and help students. Finally, we have a peer to peer tutoring club where we have senior students who volunteer their time to work with junior students in uh, areas such as English, math, French, geography, any of the areas they may be need tutoring in. We also have senior students who take advantage of that program as well. We just have to sometimes ensure that we have senior tutors that have the qualifications to actually help those students. Expectations. So this, what we expect from students when they attend Curtis is obviously respect. So respect of self, respect of others, respect of teachers and staff, and as also the respect of our building. Attendance is obviously key because students need to be here in order to be successful every day. Attendance is taken in every one of their classes. If a student is not in their class that day, you will receive a center voice message saying that your student was not in class. Involvement. Students are encouraged to always speak with their teacher and self advocate if they do need to have any specialized help or if they want to access one of the other resources that I mentioned in my previous slide, the, the resource room or the uh, student success teacher. Then finally, communication. Communication goes two different ways. So obviously communication from the student to the teacher when they need help and also the teacher will give feedback so that the students can uh, perfect their work. So communication also leads to the amount of communication that comes from the teachers in a formal way. So I'm going to use semester one as an example. So in October, teachers will be giving um, at the beginning of October to parents a progress report on how the students are faring in the subjects to that point. Then come the middle of November, there is a formal midterm report card that has a grade. And then finally, at the end of the course, there is a final report card that indicates whether the student has attained the credit or was unsuccessful. The secondary school requirements for a diploma, there are compulsory subjects that the ministry mandates that all students take. So throughout their high school career, they're going to be doing four English credits, a French credit in grade nine, two science credits, three math credits, Canadian history in grade 10, Canadian geography grade nine, an arts credit that's usually taken in grade nine, a healthy active living credit, which is a form of phys ed credit, and then two half courses. When we sum those, that takes us to 15 credits, plus three other credits, and they are known as groups. And you'll see that they are in three separate groups. So the first area is a group one, the second area is a group two, and the third area is a group three. I invite you to go to our website and go to the programs tab to the guidance and career education area. When you go down to documents and forms, you will find our course calendar printed on there and all of the diploma requirements will be listed on that area. I would like you to also note in each of the groups, you'll notice that French and cooperative education is in three, all three of the groups. So let's say a student decides to take French in grade nine to fulfill the compulsory that was on the previous slide. They could also fulfill two other of these compulsories with their French credits that they take. So they could get a group one and a two or a group one and a three or so forth. So there's many different ways for students to actually fulfill those groups. All they need to do is make sure that they take one of the subjects from each, from each of the groups to fulfill the group. 
So when we sum the 15 from my previous slide with the three on this slide, that gives them 18 compulsory subjects. In addition to the 18 compulsory subjects, they have to take 12 elective credits. Elective credits are courses that the student could be taking out of interest, or they could be courses once they hit grade 11 and 12 that sets them on their pathways for apprenticeship, college, university, or workplace. They also have to fulfill 40 hours community service. So that means that the student has to volunteer for 40 hours throughout grade nine to 12. Those hours can be recorded on a sheet that can be found on our website, again, under the Guidance and Careers tab. They can also be picked up in our guidance office once the students begin at Curtis. Students can start those hours as soon as they cease to be a student at their elementary school. So on July the 1st, they can start their community hours. They can do any kind of voluntary activity at a charitable organization or a not-for-profit. And there are many different things that they could actually do to fulfill those hours. They could go to a local place of worship, like a church, synagogue, or temple, where they can participate in activities there and be helpful. They can also go to a local service club, like the Lions Club or so forth, Rotary. There are different events that they put on that actually help benefit the community. So there's lots of opportunities. Also in the course calendar, there's a page that's devoted to community hours. There's a, an actual uh, website there that I suggest, volunteerdurham.net, that students can actually go to and find opportunities in our area. The literacy test is the last piece that they need to complete in order to earn their secondary school diploma. So I always remind students that it's 30 credits, 40 hours, and their literacy test, and that's how they graduate. So in grade nine, the Ministry of Education has five compulsory courses that students need to take. So they are English, science, geography, French, and math. In English, there are two streams that they can choose from, either academic or locally developed. In science, there are two streams, either the de-streamed or locally developed. In geography, Academic is the only stream available. Students who are immersion students must take the academic geography for the immersion in order to be accumulating those credits for French certificate. In French, core students have academic or open level French available to them. Students who are in immersion will be taking the academic FIF1DF course. In math, they can choose from either de-streamed or locally developed. Those are the five main compulsory subjects. And I'm gonna go over those different levels that I was talking about on the last slide. So academic and de-streamed, I'm gonna group those two together because the components of those, um, of those levels are very similar. So, a student needs to be independent and collaborative in their learning. They also need to be self-reflective thinkers and learners, be able to take feedback and reflect on that feedback and implement the feedback. They also need to be able to implement various problem solving strategies in order to tackle different questions that the teachers may be giving them. The size of the class is a 28 to one ratio, which means that there's 28 students to one teacher. I want to use the de-streamed math as an example of what the classroom might look like. So when the student first goes into a de-streamed class, they're using something called the vertical classroom. So what that means is that they walk in and it's entirely surrounded, they're surrounded in whiteboards. Students will be going up to the whiteboards so that they can actually be working on problem sets that teachers can um, make sure that they're giving feedback, immediate feedback as they see the students working on them, but also students can learn from and with each other while they're working on the problem sets on the whiteboards. 
students also have an entry level into all the questions that are available for them to look at. So for example, the student may attempt, there's three different questions. They may attempt a beginning question, and then if they're successful, they want to attempt the intermediate type of question. And then if they want the challenge, they can move on to the advanced. So let's say the student perfects the intermediate question. And a couple of weeks later, they will revisit that area again and will be given the opportunity to actually try the advanced if they wish. So they're permitted to go back and retry some of the things that they have learned so that they can start to perfect and move on from that skill. The other thing that I want to mention is that on a test, students are given the option of trying the three different entry questions. So whether they want to try beginning question, intermediate question, or an advanced question. So the course is really tailored to the learning need of the student. In a locally developed class, the emphasis in the class is more on the critical skills that are literacy and numeracy skills. Students who choose locally developed are the students who have had difficulty meeting many of the grade eight expectations. They are below a level one in their subjects. They consistently are having difficulty in the area and do need more support in the classroom. So the locally developed area will allow the students to have more access to the teacher because it's a 14 to one ratio in that classroom. So besides the compulsory, students will be choosing three elective courses. All of these courses are at the open level. That means that any student may take them. So healthy active living, is phys ed. Immersion students must choose this option as one of their French courses. Exploring technologies give students a chance to try uh, a little bit of manufacturing, the welding piece, a little bit of the computers and some construction. So they get to explore the different types of technologies we have in the school. If they're interested in the arts, they could choose drama, instrumental music or visual arts. We also have business classes. We also have learning strategies for students who have an IEP who really do need that specialized attention to work not only on their subjects, but also work on different skills such as presentation skills. They could be working on um, note taking skills, study skills, and so forth. Finally, exploring family studies has a little bit of sociology in it, some cooking, as well as some sewing. So students will choose three of these, and they'll also choose an alternate in case one of the three they choose does not work on their schedule. So they'll choose eight courses, and they'll have four in each semester. They'll also choose an additional alternate, like I mentioned, when they put their courses in. French immersion. So French immersion students, to work towards an immersion certificate, they must do two, or sorry, 10 credits in French while they're in high school. So in grade nine, they have three credits that they must complete. In grade 10, they have three. In grade 11, they have two. And in grade 12, they have two. The immersion is explained in the course calendar and what the courses that are available to them in each year is in a specialized area of the course calendar. So in grade nine, students will be taking the French immersion, French, geography in French, and the healthy active living in French. You'll note that all immersion course codes end in F. So immersion students, who are considering doing the certificate must select all three of these. Students also have the choice to continue in immersion and not go for certificate, but take courses that they would like to take in immersion. This slide is actually from our Juno Beach commemoration that we went over 
a few years ago for the D-Day commemorations and our students, um, we were visiting on this, in this picture, one of the World War II um, sites. So an advanced placement, students may want to go into more depth in a subject that than usually what occurs in an academic class. So advanced placement starts in grade 10. Students will have the choice to look at English, history, science, and math as opportunities of advanced placement. Students who are IEP gifted can take those courses automatically. Other students need to be an application in order to take the courses. And again, those applications will be available to students once they're in grade nine going into grade 10 if they wish to try the advanced placement. Another specialized program we have in the school is a specialist high skill major. We, as I mentioned before, we have three. We have one in arts and culture, construction, and one in environment. Students actually get specialized reach ahead experiences and opportunities because they're choosing to go in a specific sector. All students have this opportunity available to them regardless of their destination after high school. So if they want to do an apprenticeship, college, university, or workplace, they can go into the specialist high skill major. Once a student fulfills all of the aspects of the specialist high skill major, it's denoted on their transcript and also a red seal will go on their high school diploma. So in design and performance, on the upper left-hand side, you can see that there's some students working on Macs in our new Mac lab. So this is the digital design that they're working on in the class. Just on the right hand side, one of our students is working in the visual arts piece that goes along with the design. And then finally, students will be working with the different technologies and you'll see in the lower slide where they are doing video recording and um, actually altering that. In the construction area, students can start in the first slot, um, picture that I have on the upper left hand corner. A student is learning in grade 10 how to use the equipment. And then the two other slides involve some of our senior students who are working on a project that is part of the specialist high skill major and also a dual credit in the school. In the environment, so on the upper left hand side, you'll see that the students work with the bees and they actually make products from the bees. Everything from obviously honey to uh, different, there's lip balm and they've made soap, bee paper, a number of different things. In the adjacent pictures, you'll see that the students are treetop trekking. And then finally in the lower right hand side, You'll see the students who participated in the outdoor education class and they were on a camping trip. So the specialist high skill majors will have bunder, bundled specific credits and they will have sector recognized certifications and training that come for free, experiential learning activities and reach ahead experiences. All of these courses and information on the specialist high skill majors can be found in our course calendar. And if you have questions, please email us or contact us. On this slide, we had one of uh, the indigenous um, hoop dancers come to our school and participate in one of our many assemblies that we've had. So students can participate in extracurricular activities you would have received uh, a little pamphlet and I listed many of those activities on the back of the pamphlet. Everything from sports to different clubs, for instance, K-pop club. We also have different bands. We also have Dungeons and Dragons. So there's many things for students to get engaged in. 
We also have student events in the school. So everything from assemblies, and we have been doing some things online as well. So we had a Marianne at Christmas time where it's a, it's a talent show and we were actually able to um, record the students and then allow the students to watch that. We also have many different student leadership opportunities, not only through student council, but we also have the athletic council and we have a commitment to our community by involving our students in many different um, and supporting many different charities. So don't forget, we do have a grade nine orientation, usually the Thursday before um, high school starts in September. We will provide more information as we know more because of COVID and if there are any restrictions um, from what's given to us from the health center. And we will be doing online course selection through the schools and the different dates are listed depending on the school that your student is in. If you have any specific questions, you can email me at Tracy underscore Kirkland at kprdsb.ca. You can also visit our website, curtis.kprdsb.ca. And I've also included our special education teacher, Michelle McKinnon. Her email is Michelle underscore McKinnon at kprdsb.ca. We're more than happy to answer your questions. I'm also working through the school at this time, so you can reach me through the school at 905-436-2074, extension 230. Thank you very much for listening to the presentation. If you have, as I said, any specific questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. I hope you have a good day.